everybody, this is BKC back in From the Depths on the Engine Testing Platform. And today I, I want to talk about something that I touched on in the last video, but I want to go a little bit more in depth to it because I ran a few tests to see. Um, I'm constantly talking about how an efficient motor is better than an inefficient motor and that in the last video that injectors are not efficient and you probably don't want to use them and so what I had to do I come up with a test I, I set this field projector up I think it draws about well I don't have it powered right now but I think I got it set up to around about 350 ish power I think it actually draws like 52 point something and the reason and then I deleted all my um, my fuel below the RAF um, I just big massive fuel storage and then I um, just deleted my injector so I wouldn't have to mess with the uh, control blocks that control it and so what I want to do is I want to illustrate the importance of efficient motors versus non-efficient motors so I just have my load here that's roughly about three about 350 power and the reason I limited it to 350 power because in the last video we saw that injectors make about about 350 to about 385 horsepower um, per cylinder on an injector you can get more but you, you have to start adding more cooling and and I and then I built a little four cylinder um, you know an average four cylinder somebody like if you watch my video and you say oh man injectors are terrible so I don't want to use injectors they're just horrible so I built a little four cylinder that could do 400 horsepower you know something a beginner would do um, you know a little crank three crank motor with four cylinders and two carbs sharing making a hundred horsepower in each cylinder so the cost count on this is not much more um, actually this is a three by three by three no that's a three by four by two and um, this would be a three by three by three motor and I'm going to use one of my favorite motors, my little 3T here, because it makes a 400 horsepower. And it's not the most efficient, but it, it's just the bare minimum required to get into my, my, my efficient class ratings. And so, essentially, both of, theoretically, both, all of them should make um, 400 horsepower. And so they should, none of them. And it actually gives the injector advantage because one of the weaknesses of the injectors is that they heat the motors up. Um, the more fuel they drink, the more load they under, they heat up more, and they make less power. So um, since I'm not 100% loading the injector motor, the um, it should drink less fuel, which one of the weaknesses is it drinks a lot of fuel and it's very inefficient. Um, but since it's not going to be fully loaded, it'll probably run a little bit cooler. And it'll probably actually perform a little better in this test than what, um, you know, it, it normally would do is if you had it in a ship that needed like 800 horsepower and you had uh, multiple engines in there and one of them was just tacked through the roof. Um, so but it'd be indicative if you had two or three of these and they were all load balanced they would all run about the same so um, so the way way I want to demonstrate the difference between these motors is I have all three motors off right now and the, the shield generator is set up to do 350 pull about 352 horsepower and there's no fuel on board so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down this gas tank um, let me turn the, the injector motor on to a hundred percent so it, it wants to run right now because we have a load but it can't run because we don't have any fuel so we have it set to a hundred percent drive factor 
And as soon as I put this down, I'm going to start a timer. And um, I'll probably have to cut it out editing because it'll probably take a little bit of time. But um, as soon as I put this down, the engine should start running and the shield generator should come on. And we're going to watch how long it takes for a thousand um, fuel to be burned up with this injector motor running that 300. And I'm going to note if the shield projector ever loses power. So I'm going to do that now and we'll see what happens. So there's our thousand fuel and you notice on the, the UI that it's it's draining fairly quickly. So and the shield generators on. So I'll s cut the the video here cuz it's going to take a little time. Okay, so we're 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 coming up on the end where we're about to suck the last bit of uh fuel out of this motor out of the tank. And the shield projector has gone on, and that has been around roughly about 340, 3 minutes, 40 seconds. I'll call it like 3, it's a little bit more, so I'll call it about 3 minutes, 45 seconds. So, a 1,000 fuel in 3 minutes and 45 seconds. So, you know, if your battle's lasting more than 3 minutes, um, you're going to need more than one fuel tank to, to power that one shield. So... We're going to go ahead, since this tank is empty, we're going to go ahead and delete it. Um, and we're going to shut this motor down. And yeah, just so you don't, so you know that I'm not just picking on injector motors. I know the last video can make it seem like um, injectors are just completely, you know, created by the devil. They're, they're not, you know, they're not the worst thing in the world, but they're not the they're probably the last thing I would go to. Okay, so we're going to try to test the same test on our little average motor. Or, you know, something a beginner would build. Or, you know, the, the, the point is, is we're not maxing it out. Um, and it's probably not the most efficient. But we're going to run the same test and see what happens. So that motor's off. This motor's on. Our shield projector's on. Place a new block of fuel and it's running so you can see it's drawn a lot of fuel and um, I, to see how much fuel I mean I can look directly at the the fuel stats and calculate it out but um, you know sometimes there's a little bit of variance and with motors revving and then coming off of power and going back into power and an example of that would be like that shield getting destroyed in a battle um, then the load on the motor would go down and use less fuel and then the shield generator would get repaired and it would come back. So there is some variance, but I just want to go by pure time. So I'll cut the video here and I'll see you guys in a second to, with the results. Okay, so we're back with, and we're at the last few seconds and you can see the shield cutting in and out. The fuel is about to die. The, the engine's about to run out of fuel. Um, I don't know why the shields blink like that when they uh, when the engines get close, but I don't know if it's a bug or whatever. But you see the engines just shut off, and there's still like 13 fuel in the tank. I don't know what that's about. I don't know why. the 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 important factor here is that our simple carburetor motor, which I'd probably still consider inefficient, um, it did a four minute. It did it did four minutes of time. Um, so um, that's not that much better than our injector motor and our injector motor is a lot smaller so in a in a, a small craft where you're trying to save space when you're trying to get maximum density and save space an injector motor still can be the way to go. They're better that they, they make more power um, per block and they make so it makes the motor more dense and since they make more power they fit and they're more dense they fit in more room so in the same amount of space I can put more fuel in and make uh, extend the range over a carbureted motor so that's that's an actual good a good little test there and um, it shows that 
I'm not just picking on injector motors that yeah this goes a um, roughly about 15 seconds and I don't know why it didn't drink the last bit of fuel let me make sure this motor is off um, so now we're gonna move on to my little 3T my, one of my favorite small craft motors um, and we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna run the same test um, but I have a feeling that I could probably go watch maybe one episode of uh, one of the mo Lord of the Ring movies. Um, maybe even the whole the whole trilogy. Nah, that's two days. I don't think that would work. But let's see. Let's see what it does. Um, placing it down. And motor's on. Make sure these are off. Just to make sure... I don't want to mess up my test but notice the fuel consumption it I mean it's just about every three seconds every four seconds um, it, it's just drinking a little bit of fuel so this is easily easily gonna go over probably 20 minutes and um, it's gonna be a long time on my end so it only be a couple seconds for you guys, but let's see what happens. Okay, and uh, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, it's still running, and turns out you can't watch um, the first chapter of Lord of the Rings. You could only um, essentially heat up your dinner, uh, eat it, um, take a little break, walk around a little bit pace back and forth as this thing just sits there okay so we just had a fuel we just had our fuel generator shut off and let me look up the time from when we started versus now that is 52 minutes and roughly 30 seconds um, and I don't know why it doesn't use that last 17 fuel I don't know what that's about um, Real motors will suck suck fuel tanks dry, um, especially if they have if, even if, if they have a fuel pump. They'll even um, take all the fuel out the tank. But anyway, the the point is, this is the point of the video. You could you could say, well, BKC, that's obvious that you know this motor is probably drawing like ten ten per second, and this is like point three a second. And that's that's fairly obvious, but um, that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is um, if you take the math, the, we'll say this: the efficient motor does uh, 52 and a half minutes. The injector motor takes around three minutes, 45ish, um, and then the carburetor motor just did really only like about 15 seconds more. Um, you know, they're pretty comparable, those two motors down there, but the point of the video is, is this, this motor has a binding box and it has excluded, excluded, um, space around it that I don't exclude. So let's, uh, exclude, I have to turn the motor off real quick. So I'm not gonna but I'm not gonna break the binding box. Let me turn this off so we won't have motors running. Um, putting four fuel tanks here um, doesn't break the binding box. Um, there's another there's another space under here that can be used. Um, the space right here could be used. I've got four slots. No, uh, one, two, three, four five slots right here that can be used one slot above the motor so if I don't know if yeah it'll let me sometimes it's fiddly about where it will let you place gas tanks or where it won't see it won't let me place them here um, I could put some blocks on the side and then make it stick to the blocks but I think this will illustrate the point well enough that that's uh, five fuel tanks that's five thousand fuel on board so if I take my my results at 52.5 um, and then I multiply that times 5 
Um, this craft will run 262 and a half minutes divided by 60. Okay, so this this motor will run four hours and roughly 20 minutes, about 20 to 25 minutes. So um, that that kind of illustrates the point, and and the density doesn't change because you know. In, in the last videos, I discussed density as how much room the motor takes. But you also have to take into consideration how much the support for that motor is. How much support equipment you need to run that motor. And I can put five fuel tanks in here without even breaking the binding box. And then if this was on the ground, um, I could get another one underneath the uh, engine uh, block. There's another space right here. Um, there's a space right here, well, two, spa two spaces right there. There's a space in front of the exhaust. There's this entire side right here. And I could put just even more fuel in there, but I'm going to use five in this example because that's what was just easy to place. Okay, so what we have here is we have five fuel tanks, which will give us about four hundred four hours and 20 minutes of fuel fuel usage on this and it doesn't break the binding box so the density stays at 5.33 now this motor has a higher density um, it, it, I don't I don't even know what it is but I think it's somewhere in the uh, like 12 density rating or something like that but if I take the 52 and a half minutes that the efficient motor runs over here and then I divide it by and since the injector motor and the um, carburetor motor did you know the extra 15 seconds um, kind of puts the carburetor motor slightly ahead but if you take the 52 um, minute 52 and a half minutes and divide it by the three minutes and 45 seconds that the injector motor ran y you would get uh, 14 roughly 14 so I would need 14 fuel tanks I would need 14 fuel cans for every one of these so that comes out to be 70 fuel cans which I have right here okay um, and if you calculate out the density now that this motor has with all these fuel cans um, and I'm not really even gonna um, I think it comes out to 13 and like an eighth or something like that so this motor may run about the same amount of time with like uh, even if it's four even if it's four less fuel cans the extra space that this motor uses up makes the density roughly the same but if you calculate the densities out the densities of these motors now become terrible they become terrible and you're still better off with this because this maintains a 3.55 you know a 3 by 5 by 5 um, with a 5.33 density so um, you know looking and saying well this burns like 9 or 10 a second or even if it's burning only five a second and this is burning point three a second you say well that's just gonna be you know uh, roughly 14 times difference because that's what it works out to be in actual time this is the visual representation of what you know this is a, a motor that a craft that can stay in battle for four hours and 20 minutes or you know under a 350 load f continuously four hours and 20 minutes and then this is how much fuel you would need to do the same with essentially both of these motors because this one's a little bit more efficient and I'm, I would even argue if you put two superchargers you turn these carbs up and uh, you put two superchargers on here you might you would better knock about 30 percent of this fuel off well about 20% um, 
you would better probably knock a whole row off. Um, so then the carburetor motor, even even a, a, a just a, a poorly built um, carburetor motor, actually starts. You know, if it takes up just four more blocks of space um, to save four blocks of fuel, then it's a zero wash, and you could just use whatever you want. Um, but if you put a supercharger on here, uh, then it would get a 30% efficiency boost, which would be about 20% less fuel. So it would be, uh, this is 70 so 20, it wouldn't be 20, yeah, it'd be about 15, so it'd pretty much be about two rolls of fuel, so just dropping two superchargers on here would save you a good bit, and then this motor starts pushing it, but we also have to take note that putting two superchargers on here is efficiency parts, and so we're going in, we're just pushing our efficiency um, up, so if you're going to push your d efficiency up, you're just better off using your efficient motor in the first place. Okay, so if you if you do the math, um, 5,000 fuel um, on a max efficient refinery, um, 246 fuel is one material. So this is around 20 materials. This is around 20 materials of um, fuel. So it would be easy to armor up and so it's it's roughly around four four materials of uh, fuel per can um, so this would be easy to armor say you know and protect so we would never be dead in the water and this would be this is 70 containers of fuel it, it would roughly be around about two 285 um, 285 material um, and um, it, it 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 would be harder if you're the point of using a small motor is to have a small ship it would be really hard to place these all around the ship to take advantage of redundancy of the fuel tanks to where they don't all get exploded at the same time so efficiency is density is not everything and efficiency is not a hundred percent to do with just fuel efficiency it's also material efficiency because in cost efficiency because building 70 fuel cans costs a hell of a lot more than building five fuel cans. Um, five ca fuel cans is a hell of a lot less material intensive to protect than 70 fuel cans. So I hope that guy sh that shows you guys that um, fuel efficiency is not the end all be all. Density is not the end all be all um, because if you need a small craft, if you need a small motor for a small craft, it's because you don't have a lot of space. Well, if you don't have a lot of space, you say, oh, I can't give up, you know, 3 by 5 by 5 on my small craft for a motor. Um, so you're going to go, well, almost the smallest you can make a, a motor that you know makes the same power as this is three by three by three that's not much that's not that much smaller when you factor in 14 fuel cans per every one of these it's like you have to ask yourself what are you trying to accomplish you're trying to accomplish saving space well I wouldn't do it in the motor I would make a bigger motor with one can down here in this empty space and armor up this whole section then try to take this little motor and put you know anywhere from 14 well 14 fuel cans two rows would be how much fuel you need to run for the same amount of time and you you know you could say well I don't need to run for a whole whole hour so we could cut this down to you know 
say 10 cans of fuel or 8 cans of fuel but then you have no effective combat range um, and I would rather armor this up with one can and then have maybe a redundant can somewhere in the craft that where when it gets into combat I notice it never usually takes damage to that area and put me a backup can and then so I would have an hour of usage from the can that's built into the motor and then I would have an hour of backup in my auxiliary can and ideally a third can somewhere as an additional backup and then if I take no damage so if I go against an enemy that's way less um, combat effective than me the, the craft can run for three hours continuously and I don't have to spend all my time going back for refuels going back to take out an enemy going back for refuels going back um, I can just do three hour loop of combat taking out enemies before they reinforce that makes that this this system with one can and one or two auxiliary tanks more combat effective or combat efficient than this with 14 cans constantly running back and forth for uh, refuels and then if you want redundancy then you need if you want the same redundancy as two cans you need two more rows if you want the redundancy of three cans as three more rows and you open yourself up to the the possibility um, in this scenario if a lucky shot takes off one of my fuel cans on one of my motors yeah I lose an hour's worth of running of fuel but that would be 14 crams the the same cram cannon shell could come in and hit right here and take out my entire fuel supply and so if the point was to build a small craft by the time you put this tiny motor in there and put all this fuel in there and armor all that up um, it's gonna take up more space than this motor so um, combat effectiveness in space use um, you're you're almost always better off with a better designed motor than just throwing something down and then going well I, I, you know this is not the most efficient motor but you know I need this much fuel to, to support it it, it doesn't it, it doesn't make sense and I hope that shows you guys that this making efficient motors is this is why I make efficient motors because if I have a very reliable power system I have very few um, fuel on board I could fit more resources for repairs more ammo for more damage and I can make my ship more combat effective so a good reliable motor is always the way to go and density is not the end all be all fuel efficiency is not the end all be all but the better the more efficient you can make your motor the less fuel you got and the more you're opened up to um, losing fuel because they don't repair if you lose a fuel tank they, the tank repairs but the fuel inside is lost forever um, I think someone pointed out that when you pick up the salvage from your uh, enemies yet that you defeat, you get some fuel. Now, I haven't confirmed that yet in the campaign um, because of the, the way the campaign keeps changing. Every time they change all the stats of anything, it changes the campaign and you got to go back and redo all your ships or you'll find yourself in a campaign that's you know you've got 20 hours into a campaign and your ship uses its missiles to win but since they change something in the missiles that you find yourself you get into combat and you're a hundred percent combat ineffective or the missiles are not even going toward the target or 
they go in toward the target but they're doing no damage because the missiles change so I haven't gone into the com and, and confirmed that you get fuel back but if you do that's a good thing and it makes this you know it makes the problem with this less severe but depending on how much fuel you get back depend depends on how bad this actually is and I, I'll see you guys in the next one